This laptop is running an RTX 5080 laptop GPU, but it's not built like a tank. The new Gigabyte Gaming A16 Pro is trying to deliver flagship level GPU performance in a slimmer body while also being one of the best bang for buck at about $2,200. The A16 Pro currently has two versions, the DXH, which packs a 12 gig 5070 Ti laptop GPU, or the one that Gigabyte sends over, the DYH, with the more powerful RTX 5080 with 16 gigs of VRAM. Whichever one you go for you'll be getting an i7 240h cpu a 165 hertz 16 inch ips display with the resolution of 2560 by 1600 32 gigs of lp ddr5 memory any one terabyte gen 4 nvme ssd with an extra m.2 slot for additional storage i benchmarked a few games that range from graphic intensive to faster paced gaming and even hooked it up to a 4k monitor to get an idea of how this laptop handles gaming i had a very limited time with this laptop so i'm only going to focus on gaming. All right guys, before we jump into benchmarks, I want to first go over the design language of the A16 Pro. As you can see here, it has a dark gray with a black all around. The front has a pretty nice metallic finish to it. It is a fingerprint magnet, so just keep that in mind. A nice little microfiber cloth will wipe off any type of uh, fingerprint oils. Now, as for the logo for a Gigabyte, I'm going to bring it a little bit closer here. You can see it has a nice holographic design. And if you look closely um, inside the letters, you'll see some circuit designs on each of the letters, which I think looks pretty cool. Now, as for the slimness of this laptop, we're looking at about 19 and a half millimeters at about five pounds. And I do have a MacBook Pro. I'll give you guys a quick comparison between the two. Stacked up against each other, we have the MacBook Pro on the bottom and the A16 Pro on the top. And of course, the MacBook Pro is thinner at about four millimeters. It's also much lighter, so it's about a pound and a half lighter. But the A16 Pro is packing some serious GPU power. So of course, that's where a gaming laptop shines. And I'm still surprised at how portable the A16 Pro is. Now, when we open up the laptop here, it's going to have all black on the inside. The display is going to have your standard IPS matte coating. And right on the bottom over here on the corner, you'll see gaming with 16 in Roman numerals, which I think is a really nice touch. Trackpad as well has some really nice cool looking designs here with a little crosshair on the middle. Uh, the buttons are very soft. And underneath on the laptop, we have that same type of design language all around. Now going over the ports we get with the A16 Pro, starting off with the left side, we have our power input, our ethernet port, an HDMI 2.1 port, USB-A and a USB-C on the left side. And on the right side here, we have a three and a half millimeter audio jack, followed by two USB-A ports. I would have definitely loved to see an additional USB-C, but we have plenty of USB-A ports for a keyboard mouse and whatever other device you want to connect. Of course, we can always expand it with a USB hub. All right, now let's dive into some benchmarks on this A16 Pro. I'll be testing raw power, DLSS, and frame generation. I'll be starting off with Battlefield 6 using the recommended graphic settings, which is a combination of ultra and high settings. Using only raw power, I saw an average FPS of 67 frames per second with a 97% GPU utilization and about 95 watts of power with temperatures reaching about 79 degrees Celsius. Turning on DLSS at ultra performance, but no frame gen gave us a a higher average FPS of 89 frames per second with lower GPU utilization, which also translated to less power draw and slightly lower temps. Now for the best FPS performance, enabling frame generation will give us a huge boost and will draw about the same wattage and GPU utilization as raw. Some of you guys might not like the idea of AI generated frames, but you do get to choose between two, three, or four times the frames for titles that support it. Enabling just 2x gave me an average FPS of about 159 frames per second, which is very close to the A16 Pro's max refresh rate. At 4x, the average FPS I got was 214 frames per second, and in my experience, the frame gen was a better and smoother experience. Whichever settings you play in, the RTX 5080 stayed under 80 degrees Celsius, while the CPU peaked at about 80 degrees Celsius. Next game I benchmarked is Black Myth Wukong, which is a very graphic intensive game. I'm using the recommended graphic settings, which has it at cinematic quality with no ray tracing and a DLSS resolution set to 68, which is essentially DLSS quality. Starting off with no frame generation, I got an average of 40 frames per second, which is really low, but expected for this high fidelity game. GPU power draw was higher at about 105 watts, but still stayed under 80 degrees Celsius. Next, I enabled frame generation at 2x, which got me an average of 71 frames per second and definitely more enjoyable at these frames while still maintaining DLSS quality and cinematic graphic settings. Now, maxing out the frame generation to 4x got me to an average of 119 
frames per second. I personally enjoyed playing at 4x, and while you'll notice some random artifacts, especially around Wukong when moving the camera, the game to me still looks amazing. Next game at Benchmark is Forza 5, with graphics set to extreme and only using Nvidia's DLAA. With no frame generation, I averaged 124 frames per second, and when I enabled frame gen, the average bumped up to 183 frames per second, which is more than enough to take advantage of the max refresh rate. The final game at Benchmark was Marvel Rivals at the highest graphic settings. Using only raw power, I averaged 51 frames per second, with GPU power drop peaking at about 107 watts. Now turning on DLSS at ultra performance, our average jumped to 94 frames per second, but with significantly less power draw. And then I maxed out frame generation at 4x, which got us to an average of 265 frames per second. Power is definitely amazing, but when your GPU is in high demand, the WinForce Infinity EX cooling system will rev up to its highest to ensure stable performance. Here's a sound clip with the fans at full throttle. They're definitely loud and make it harder to hear the gameplay from the built-in speakers, so I'd recommend headphones for a better audio experience. Now, for those of you guys that want to know how this would perform on a 4K monitor, I tested out Black Mint Wukong and Battlefield 6 with frame generation set to 4X to give us the max FPS we could achieve while keeping the graphic settings at the highest. For Black Mint Wukong, the recommended settings for DLSS was 50, which is performance, and with those settings and frame gen at 4X, I saw an average of 105 frames per second, which makes it very playable at 4K. For Battlefield 6, I got an average of 142 frames per second with DLSS set to ultra performance and 4X frame generation. 4K gaming is definitely doable, but you're gonna have to rely on upscaling and frame generation for the best performance. So after hours of gaming on this laptop, I can definitely recommend this if you're looking for a powerful gaming laptop with incredible value. The IPS display isn't gonna be the best viewing experience compared to mini LED or the superior OLED displays with instant response times, but you're still getting great color accuracy and reliability. Most RTX 5080 laptops can range from 2,500 to upwards of $3,000. While those might give you a more powerful CPU or better display types, the Gigabyte A16 Pro sets itself apart by keeping the entry level for an RTX 5080 laptop as low as possible. This laptop truly delivers what you'd expect from an RTX 5080 laptop GPU with gaming at high settings while keeping it cool for hours in a slimmer form factor. So if you want high performance and maximum value, I highly recommend checking this laptop out. If you're interested in getting the Gigabyte Gaming A16 Pro, I'll have affiliate links down below, which also helps to support the Firewolf Tech channel. Hit that subscribe and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Firewolf out.